the book. Turning it into a vehicle for the media's propagandization. Just the way that a virus may parasite the genetic mechanisms of a host cell. <clears throat> Back in 2010, when my daughter was three, she started saying blah, 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 blah. I was okay with her repeating things she heard if she used them correctly. So I asked her if she knew what blah 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 meant. She paused and said, it's when daddy says something that doesn't matter. Dang, she didn't know what it meant. Until I had a daughter, I never realized just how often I said things that don't matter. But since then, I have focused all my efforts on figuring out which of my communications matter and which don't. Whether we're talking to a daughter, a date, a boss, a coworker, a client, our Twitter and Facebook followers, the media, a crowd at a conference, or friends, and family at a funeral, this book will teach you virality, the science and art of creating content that does not disappear <clears throat> after you speak or write it. But instead, it's memorable enough to live on. The ultimate goal is to create messages that have a direct and engaging emotional impact on listeners or readers, so they have the potential to spread fast and far to go viral. You'll learn the newest, most important secrets of constantly generating viral online content, words, images, or videos that are seen and shared by hundreds of thousands and eventually even millions of people, which is something my colleagues and I routinely achieve in three different organizations. My top post of 2017 had a half million direct views, which means more than 10 million people probably saw the headline or some part of the story. Not bad for an article on climate change. Imagine the reach and impact you could have when you learn these secrets. And you will also learn the secrets of going viral in your professional life. How to commute your ideas in the most memorable and persuasive way. Consistent with your personal story to build and grow your brand. To maximize your impact so you can stand out from the crowd no matter your passion profession. Learn these secrets from the best practitioners and social media mavens I know, as well as some of the world's greatest masters of creating viral content. Jesus, Shakespeare, Lincoln, Martin Luther King, songwriters like Lady Gaga and Hamilton's Lynn Manuel Miranda, Barack Obama, Oprah, and even Donald Trump, I say even Donald Trump, because many people I talk to, especially Democrats, environmentalists, and scientists remain puzzled by Trump's 2016 victory, and draw all the wrong conclusions, or worst of all, mistakenly believe there is nothing to be learned from a man as lost as Trump. <clears throat> but as we will see, Trump and his digital campaign team, along with the Russians and fake news site like Breitbart, mastered virality, whereas Hillary Clinton explicitly rejected it. That explains much of why he is now president and she isn't. Indeed, unless 
until and unless progress is fully understand and embrace viral messaging, our democracy and the future of a livable climate are at risk. Like a lot of people, I spend most of my life guessing which of my communications mattered, which were truly memorable and effective. But the good news is that the revolutions in social media, information technology, and brain science now makes it possible to stop guessing and start knowing what communication matters. We now know the best strategies and tactics and they were not taught to you in high school or college. If you and the organizations you work with use the secrets of my book as the cornerstone of your messaging and media strategy, then you'll maximize your chances of going viral and you won't be trying to shout into the roar of Niagara Falls like everyone else. The five rules of going viral. How to be clicky and sticky. The good news is also the bad news. Those who do understand the secrets of viral messaging are flooding the system. Inundating it with both good news and bad news that grabs your initial attention clicky and then keeps it sticky. You can cut through the clutter by embracing these five rules for constantly creating content that can go viral. Story. Tell a compelling story. They use the simple and but therefore formula. Figures of speech. Use the most unforgettable figures of speech, especially repetition, irony, and metaphor. Little diagram here. Number three, emotions. Trigger one of the three activating emotions that trigger content sharing. Number four, memorable elements. Select the most memorable words, phrases, and stories. Testing, number five. Embrace message testing and tested messages. This book explains in detail how to wield these five weapons to become an influence ninja. If you're not doing all five, and very, very few people, organizations are, <clears throat> then your message is at high risk of being drowned out by those who are. If you're not doing all five, then you are at high risk of being ignored or forgotten and miss the deafening drumbeat of our 24 seven news and social media cycle. A drumbeat that Trump has amplified and sped up into an intensity previously unimaginable. These five strategies are proven to work by leading experts at making viral content, including my colleagues and me. These five strategies are also proven to work by three separate sciences, the latest marketing research, social science, and brain studies. A central point of this book, perhaps the single most important thing to understand and internalize to get in your gut is that these five strategies are in fact all basically just one overarching strategy. This is a grand unified theory gut of going viral. If you want to be as memorable as possible, you need a message that triggers the right emotions and that is most consistently achieved by telling a simple, compelling story using the figures of speech. These are the most tested winning messages over the many thousands of years of human civilization. And the science increasingly tells us that many tens of thousands of years it took Homo sapiens to evolve our mastery of language. When you test multiple messages, overarching message, when you test multiple message online, when you crowdsource your headlines, your overarching message, and other content, you can learn the specific words and images that your audience finds most clicky and sticky. From the dawn of language eons ago to now, 
the most viral messages have always been stories told with figures of speech that trigger key emotions and stick in the memory a speech that trigger key emotions stick in the memory such as metaphor irony and repetition but also other such as hyperbole and apophysis pretend denial two of donald trump's favorites the figures were the focus of my 2012 book, Language Intelligence. These viral messages, including humanity, best known and most retold stories, which have literally spread by the word of mouth and stood the test of time, such as the heroic journeys of the great epic poems like Homer's Elid and the Lost of the Sea. The stories of the Bible embodied the strategies of both. And they're arguably the most successful and influential collections of viral content ever created. Today, the most viral messages are the stories told with the figures of speech that trigger key emotions and stick in the memory. We call them pop songs and hip hop. They compromise 95, the top 100 YouTube videos of all time. There is much to learn from viral songwriters. Our modern day bards, for instance, Lynn Manuel Miranda's game changing hip hop music, Hamilton, is the quintessence of the five rules of virality. I think anyone who is serious about mastering these skills should memorize the whole musical. The Greeks figured it out some 25 centuries ago that the figures of speech were the memory tricks the ancient barons also used to remember their long epic poems and songs. Tricks that also made sure the audience remembered them. The Greeks further understood the persuasive and memorable storytelling. Using the figures was the best way to be emotionally compelling. Here is Aristotle in his classic text on the art of persuasion. Rhetoric discussing the importance of mimicking a natural speech. Your language will be appropriate if it expresses emotion and character. To express emotion, you'll employ the language of anger, speaking of outrage, the language of disgust and discreet reluctance to utter a word when speaking of impurity or foulness, the language of exaltation or a tale of glory. What makes people believe us and trust us? As Aristotle goes on to say, the aptness of language is one thing that makes people believe in the truth of your story. He links specific features of speech with specific emotional states. For instance, he notices the hyperbole. Extravagant exaggeration is used by angry men. So it's no surprise. Trump's use of hyperbole was central to his emotional connection with so many angry voters. Clinton's rejection of figurative speech is one reason she had difficulty making an emotional connection with so many voters. Modern brain science confirms this ancient wisdom. As Kendall Haven sums up the key findings of this book, story proof, the science behind the startling power of stories. Emotional information triggers memories. Of course, you don't need studies to know emotions cause vivid memories. You just have to pause and recall your most memorable moments to realize that what is welded into your memory are the moments attached to the strongest emotion, your first kiss, a shameful or embarrassing action, your pride and joy in a big victory or achievement by you or your child, a moment of sheer terror, the time you felt betrayed, the death of a close relative, and on and on. Emotions tell us which events are worth remembering. The animal that needs stories. Another key conclusion from recent brain research is that evolution has wired our brain to think in narrative. Stories are how we make sense of the world, how we understand our role in it, and how we create meaning in our lives. Indeed, the world narrative comes through the Latin narrative to tell, relate, recount, 
which in turn comes from Proto-Indo-European root, meaning to know, which is the root of words such as cognition, ignorant, and know. Our brains have evolved to know, to think, and to explain through stories. Since our brains are wired for stories, it's only natural that the figures of speech, the core elements of any emotional, compelling, and memorable story turn out to constitute basic schemes by which people conceptualize their experiences and the external world. As cognitive sciences Raymond Gibbs Jr. put in his 1995 book, The Poetics of Mind, we think in figures so the figures can be used to change our thinking, thus being memorable through emotional res resonant storytelling. It's not just crucial to going viral, it's also crucial to being persuasive. One of the brain's subconscious rule of thumb is that easily recalled things are true. As one Washington Post article discussing the extensive social science research on this truth effect put it, this truth explains a key role repetition plays in both persuasion and virality. Since deliberate thinking requires so much meta metabolic energy and takes so much time, Humans have developed a great many mental shortcuts to make sense of things, to figure out the best strategy when actions and decisions need to be made quickly. Generally, the, those shortcuts are a form of pattern matching. Does my current problem or situation resemble one I have seen or heard before? As we evolved, the brain was forced to rely on tricks to enlarge memory and speed Computation explained the Korean biologist Edward O. Wilson in his book Biophilia. Hence, the human mind specializes on analogy and metaphor, on a sweeping together of chaotic sensory experience into a workable categories labeled by words and stacked into hierarchies for quick recovery. The best stories are the highest form of pattern matching and analogy precisely because they are the most detailed <clears throat> descriptions of people's behaviors and decisions and their consequences. That explains their power. Indeed, beginning in early childhood, we'll match, listen to, and read our favorite story times, time and time again, and we'll eagerly embrace new stories, especially ones with our favorite characters been said that humans are the storytelling animal, but we're really the story needing animal. We need to tell them. Yes, but we need to hear them again and again. The problem is your brain can be hacked by taking advantage of these very shortcuts that lead you astray, that lead you to make a bad decision. This is seduction, the dark side of persuasive and memorable speech, the dark side of viral. One of the goals of this book is to expose the devious devices used by dangerous demons, crafty Casanovas, and sneaky snail salesmen. The language intelligence needed to thwart these other subtle seducers comes naturally to very few. To be resisted and debunked, the verbal tricks must be made explicit. If you don't debunk a demon, like Trump or a climate science denier correctly, and most people, including most journalists, don't, then you will only help their message go viral. Few people are taught, taught any of this in high school and college. Worse, most of us have been taught to be as unmemorable and unpersuasive as possible. It has taken me a quarter century to unlearn almost everything I was taught about communication on my journey to get a PhD in science, particularly the notion that educated people should be as unemotional and literally minded as possible when writing and speaking. <clears throat> that so many people are terrified of public speaking is more evidence of the failure of our modern educational system. We evolved this amazing ability and need to tell and to hear memorable, emotionally compelling stories. 
If you follow the five rules of going viral and throw in one simple but ingenious hack from storing talent and guy room, Randy Olsey, you'll be emulating history's most famous public speakers. You will quickly surpass the vast majority of people in speaking skill. And any fears you have about telling stories in public or delivering a eulogy will start to fade. Significantly, the world of communication completely changed in the last few years. During the very time I was trying to make my content go viral, because of this revolution, my colleagues and I now have access to powerful but inexpensive tools to help maximize the chances our content is both clicky and sticky. If you use the same tools and rules that we use, your content will be clickier and stickier too. The stories behind this book. This is the first book to reveal all of these secrets. The only reason I've been able to rate it is that I've been incredibly fortunate to work with and learn from cutting edge experts from three organizations at the forefront of that revolution. Think Progress, the leading progressive news and opinion website, The Years Project, the multimedia home of viral climate energy videos and New Frontier Data, the leading big data firm providing actionable analysis on cannabis. The views expressed in this book belong solely to me, however, and not necessarily to these organizations. They each have a very different story and very different approaches to creating viral content. But as we'll see, you can go viral online in many ways, just as you can go viral in life in many ways. My online viral story began in 2006 when I funded climateprogress.org, a project of the Center for American Progress Action Fund. Within a few years, it had gone viral. Time Magazine named it as one of the best blogs of 2010 and one of the top five blogs Time Writers read daily. Nature called it perhaps the world's most influential political climate change blog. The New York Times columnist Tom Friedman called it an indispensable blog. A few years ago, Climate Progress became the climate section of the center's broader news website, Think Progress, which was founded in 2005. <clears throat> so much of Mike's success over the years was built on the advice and expertise of Think, the Think Process team. Since that merger, I've been able to work directly with WorldCraft's class writers, editors, and social media mavens under the leadership of editor-in-chief Jude Lignan, a team that created one of the 10 most popular news sites online as ranked by LifeWire in 2017. Previously, my best posts had tens of thousands of page views, but by 2017, the very best had hundreds of thousands. The all-important headlines are being seen by millions of people through social media platforms like Twitter and Facebook, as well as Reddit, Yahoo, and Google. In March 2013, Climate Progress had climbed following on Facebook and Twitter of 550,000, which dwarfed the number of followers on the sites that deny climate science. But just five years later, Climate Progress has 280,000 followers on Facebook and another 200,000 on Twitter. I think Progress has an even more remarkable 1.8 million followers on Facebook and 850,000 on Twitter. By 2017, headline testing, the equivalent of having a reader's crowdsource the best headline in real time, had become a core strategy for generating the most viral content. Testing allows sites to identify the headline people are most likely to click on and the one that keeps the most people sticking around to actually read the posts. On a busy day, we might test 100 headlines with our readers, but Donald Trump's presidential campaign was ultimately testing 50,000 to 60,000 ads a day on Facebook, as explained by Brad Erskel, the campaign's digital director, who is now manager of Trump's 2020 re-election campaign. Now that's message testing. It allowed them to raise a quarter billion dollars on Facebook at the same time, honing and perfecting their message for every conceivable voter group. Post-election analysis found that a handful of swing states where Trump's 
exceeded his public polling numbers the states that made him president or precisely those states where his social media engagement was the highest. Moreover, thanks to the FBI and our intelligence agencies, we are learning the crucial and symbolic roles the Russians played in turning Trump's viral message into an epidemic. My second story begins in April 2010 when I met one of the few billion dollar storytellers of our time. Director James Cameron backstage on a huge Earth Day rally on the Mall in Washington, D.C. Knowing that he was going to be there and hoping we would connect over our shared concerns about climate change, I brought my new book of blog posts straight up and asked Earth Day founder Dennis Hayes to introduce us. In person, Cameron is very bit as charismatic and brilliant as I had imagined the director of so many of my favorite movies would be. I was only able to talk with him briefly and barely slipped my book into his hands before he was swamped with admirers and his attention sailed off. I felt even more dejected when a half an hour later, I happened to notice he had left my book on a nearby table where he had been holding court. I went looking for him among the back backstage crowd and finally found him chatting in the speaker's ready room. I waited for a lull in the conversation, took out my book and said with the biggest possible smile, who do I have to give this to so it doesn't get left on a table when you're swarmed by fans? Cameron chuckled and pointed to the lovely woman sitting next to him, his wife, Sue C. Ames. We all talked for longer this time, and he promised to read the book. Months passed. Then in August, I got a call from a member of his team inviting me to spend some time with him in Aspen, Colorado. As you see, the second meeting ultimately led to me being part of the team behind the Emmy-winning TV docuseries Years of Living Dangerously, which The Guardian called perhaps the most important climate change multimedia communication in Denver in history. By 2017, the Years Project team led by Joel Bach and David Geller, two former 60-minute producers with a combined 13 Emmys, were creating online viral videos that were routinely getting tens of thousands tens of millions of views a month on Facebook, and they were all on climate change, which is hardly the sexiest or most inherently viral subject. My third story began in the summer of 2014 when an online dating site I was using ran its massive amount of data on singles in the Washington DC area through its various algorithms. And it said I was a 99% match with a brilliant Cuban Italian interpreter named Gaida D. Carosi. match made possible by big data did not lead to romance instead it led to me becoming an advisor to her startup company in 2015 new frontier data which under her leash leadership has in just three years become the leading big data firm providing accurate analysis in the cannabis sector its brand has gone viral it's become the go-to source for the industry, investors, regulators, academics, and the media seeking the highest quality information in this rapidly expanding industry. For example, New Frontier was quoted in over 16,000 news articles in 2017 alone. All affected media reach 5 billion people and the equivalent of 46 million in earned or free media. For me, it's been an eye-opening lesson in an essential element of modern virality. Big data. Big data is an ill-defined term that Oxford Dictionaries calls extremely large data sets that may be analyzed compu computationally to reveal patterns, trends, and associations, especially relating to human behavior and interactions. The key phrase is reveal patterns. Pattern matching, as noted earlier, is one of a human's defining features. Our brains have evolved to make sense of the staggering amount of data and information we receive through our senses every second, every minute, every hour, every day. Our brains have a unique ability to rapidly figure out which information is relevant and then to process that information in real time at a very high level, including through metaphors and stories. That ability is crucial to understanding the world around us and our role in it, crucial to 
helping us make everyday decisions as well as predictions about the consequences of our actions and what the future may hold. But it's not unique anymore. Computers can beat the best chess players and the best Jeopardy contestants. Software can write subject lines for emails that are opened and read at a higher rate than those written by the wetware of our brains. Data engines determine much of what we are exposed to online. With the content of advertisement, it allows New Frontier to convert staggering amounts of raw data in real time to tell the story of what's going on in the cannabis sector and to explain what the best decisions are for investors, policymakers, cannabis companies, and others. It was big data that allowed Facebook to monetize the uncomfortable amount of information they have about you and your friends and their friends and two billion other people and then sell it to whoever wants to target you for a message or an ad online. It was big data that enabled the Trump campaign and the Russians to win a seemingly unwinnable election by cost-effectively micro-targeting key persuadable voting groups in a few swing states with messages designed and tested to emotionally resonate with them. <clears throat> Indeed, a key point about going viral today, either online or in life, is that for the overwhelming majority of us, our goal isn't the near impossible task of going so viral that everyone reads our content or knows our brand. Our goal is to go viral with our target audience. Science fiction writer Neil Stevenson offered a terrific analogy about how much virality is needed to be successful. He was asked a question about his fame or lack of it and replied, it helps to put this in perspective by liking me Likening me to the mayor of Demons, Iowa, he continued. It's true of both the mayor of Demons and me that out of the world's population of some six billion people, there are a few hundred thousand who consider us important and who recognize us by name. In the case of the mayor of Demons, it's a simple population of Demons metropolitan area. In my case, it is the approximate number of people who are avid readers of my books. In addition, there might be as many as a million or two who would find my name vaguely familiar. If they saw it, the name is probably true of the mayor of Des Moines. That's probably where I am, unknown to 99% of Americans, but more viral than I ever imagined. For instance, in March 2009, Rolling Stone magazine put me on their list of 100 people who are reinventing America. In December 2015, Huffington Post wrote the climate progress has been the best available source of climate change news for several years, which was always my primary aim. My main goal in this book is to help you and your message go more viral than you imagined so you can achieve your primary aim. Oh, brother, where art thou? When I was starting to research and write this book in 2017, my oldest brother, Dave, died unexpectedly. My big-hearted, wisecracking, science fiction-loving, photo-snapping, insight-generating, Sue generous brother was mostly an unsung hero. But in Minneapolis, where he lived, he had a sci-fi comedy show on a local community radio station for decades. So he was viral, at least among Twin Cities science fiction fans. His death and the subsequent memorial ceremony changed the way I think about what it means to go viral. My big brother was a larger than life figure to me, of course, but it turns out he was touched the lives of everyone he met in the corny way George Bailey does in the movie, It's a Wonderful Life. Harry H. eulogy, literally good speech, and then thinking deeply about the life he lived had been mind-changing and life-changing to me. The truth about virality is that every single interaction you have with someone, every conversation you have, everything you write online is a chance to go viral. Each interaction is a chance to make a memorable and emotional connection per, and perhaps even a life-changing one. Whether it's being the most memorable date for your ultimate mate or the most memorable candidate for the job you always wanted, or the most memorable friend, teacher, blogger, tweeter, public speaker, eulogizer, or parent. That's what it means to say something that matters, rather than just saying more blah, blah, blah. 
and that's what this book is about. So that was the introduction. And in this book, let me see. The yarn is 11 chapters, 183 pages. I just finished 16. Actually getting kind of late, guys. So I think I'm gonna save this for later. Let me know if you like this book and if you're interested in hearing more. I will start reading more to you. It's actually a library book, so I will have to work on it. Um, hopefully I can renew it if I don't read it. Since just the introduction took so long. It seems pretty interesting so far. So let me know what you guys think. And what sort of video do you want to see next?